Breaches everywhere Midwest levees burst, and tough questions follow. Corning, MOU for Michael Peters, who grows corn and soybeans near the Missouri River, it was a routine equal parts, grim and familiar save what you can, evacuate your home and watch as and swallow your fields. In the fertile river bottoms of northwest Missouri, where Mr. Peters has lived his whole life, the floods keep coming. And this year, breaches everywhere multiple, multiple breaches, said Tom Bullock, the top elected official in Holt County, MO, where crews were rushing last week to patch a leaking levee that, if it failed completely, would flood the small town of Fortescue. The flooding of the last month has exposed the vulnerabilities in a that is now so full of holes many here ruefully describe it as Swiss cheese. With dozens of costs, we can't keep this up and make a living, Mr. Peters said last week after trying to find a path to his submerged farm in a motorboat. On the River Speck Midwestern Prairie, the thousands of miles of levees are an insurance policy against nature's whims that, at their best, keep cropland and towns dry, floodwaters at bay and the agriculture-driven economy churning. But the levees are a, the recent flooding you which has, and you has pushed to the foreground, a debate that has raged quietly for generations. It boils down to, many of the levees, usually earthen and topped with grass, were built by farmers decades ago and are now managed by a patchwork of local government agencies known as levy districts that often do not coordinate or even follow the same rules. With increased flood, when the next one comes along bigger, they either fail or are overtopped again, said Nicholas Pinter, an expert on rivers and flooding at the University of California, Davis. According to the United States Army Corps of Engineers, which oversees infrastructure on the Missouri River and some of its tributaries, at least 62 levees had been breached or overtopped in the Midwest in March, and hundreds of miles of levees had sustained damage. When they run water over the top of them, there's not anything you can do, said Pat Sheldon, the president of a rural levee district in southwest Iowa that was still paying off repairs from the 2011 flood. This time, in Missouri, Mr. Bullock pointed out a levee that last week had been split open and consumed by the river. A large log swore the Army Corps of Engineers, which helps determine water levels by operating a series of dams on the Missouri River, tries to balance the needs of many who use the rivers it manages, including farmers, barge shippers, endangered animal species and people who use the water for recreation. Those interests are the Corps' number one priority in its operations is life safety, said Major General. In places like Holt County, where the floods keep coming and the levees keep breaking, there is little patience for the course approach. Last year, we're ground zero we get the full shot, said Roger Eitker, whose family owns farmland in Holt County along the banks of the Missouri River and was the lead plaintiff in that lawsuit. This week, the closest Mr. Eitker could get to his land was a two-lane road a few miles away that was now functioning as a boat ramp. Buildings in the small bar levees are big and they're good, Mr. Eitker said, but they were no match for this new normal. Every event seemed the situation has been exacerbated by wetter rainstorms, which are expected to worsen over time and have been attributed to. There are layers that come together when big events like this happen you it's never just one thing, said Barbara Mays Bosted, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service who contributed to it on climate change. Tom Waters, the chairman of the Missouri Levee and Drainage District Association, which advocates for landowners and others along the rivers, called for easing federal regulations and building bigger flood protection in rural areas. We're seeing more water in the river, but we haven't improved the infrastructure, said Mr. Waters, who farms along the Missouri River east of Kansas City, MO. Basically, but building ever higher levees is not a panacea keeping water out of one area only means it will go somewhere else. In the early 20th century, the Army Corps of Engineers and towns along the Mississippi River followed a levees only policy that meant building higher and higher walls, leaving the river no way to release its power. That strategy fit in the area's hardest hit this past month, where levees are shredded and livelihoods shattered, many blame the Corps. 
In recent weeks, Senator Josh Hawley, Republican of Missouri, said in a statement that the core was hamstrung by radical environmentalist lobbyists that are forcing the agency to prioritize wildlife over farmers. Senator Chuck Grapp, the number one priority of the core should be flood control you flood control, period, Mr. Grassley said on the Senate floor. The devastation to the levees has left much of the Midwest with nothing to hold back the waters from even a relatively minor flood, which forecasters have warned is possible in the weeks ahead. If we have a wet spring, government. Mike Parson of Mid As water recedes, at least for the moment, and the conversation shifts to recovery, many in the river bottom said they plan to stay and rebuild, hopeful that policies might change. Others said these left. It's not that I don't want to be here, said Rhonda Hunziger, the mayor of Craig, MO, population 230, where residents piled sandbags through the night in a spirited but futile attempt to save their town from the Missouri River after surrounding levees burst. Depending on what the insurance company decided, Ms. Hunziger said this could be the flood that forced her to higher ground. I have lived with Flood Mitch Smith reported from Corning and John Schwartz from New York.